Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks for joining me here. In this video, what we're going to take a look at is what happens when we have a conductor that's in an area with an ambient temperature higher than 30 degrees. Uh, as we know, most of the tables and the code book is based on an ambient temperature of 30 degrees, so we need to know what happens when we exceed that value. So just our little situation here, we basically have a rooftop installation where um, the potential for heat in this exact situation on the rooftop, even in a gravel rooftop, can sometimes reach as high as 60 degrees Celsius. So that's obviously going to reduce the ampacity of our conductor. So we'll figure out how we figure that number out. Um, so first thing we'll start with is we'll get ourselves some temperatures to work with here. So our panel, we're going to work with 75 degree termination temperatures. We're going to use 75 degree termination temperatures here. And maybe this just goes to some type of of we're just going to call it standard equipment right this feeds out to whatever a general installation we're not going to do a rooftop unit or anything like that we're just going to keep it fairly straightforward <clears throat> um, and what we're going to do is first determine what the branch circuit conductors would normally be and then determine what the requirements would be because of that higher than ambient temperature right because we have this 60, 60 degree potential on that rooftop we, I, we need to take that into account so um we'll start with our load is a we'll say it is a 55 amp to 40 volt load okay and because of the 75 degree termination temperatures at both the panel and the load we are going to also go with rw75 insulation on our conductors we'll keep all of our numbers 75 degrees so we don't have to worry about 4-006 um it's 75 is going to be our temperature okay so now that we have that we have 75 degrees if we were to do a normal branch circuit so we'll just say normal branch circuit here right if this was not outdoors if this was just an indoor installation where that temperature would not exceed 30 degrees be pretty straightforward we go table to 75 degrees and we would select simply a number six aug which has an ampacity normally of 65 amps Hey, but because of that higher than ambient temperature, so in another video, what we discuss is what happens when we have multiple conductors in a conduit and the heat generated by the magnetic fields interacting with each other reduces the ampacity. We get the same kind of a situation here where if we have this higher than ambient temperature, it's going to reduce the ampacity of my conductors as well. So if we take a look at, we have 4-004 sub rule seven item b item i tells me that if i have higher than 30 degree ambient temperature we are going to take a trip to table 5a hey and table 5a if i look at the table uh, on the left hand side it gives me the ambient temperatures and then as we follow through the rows it's uh we're gonna keep the insulation temperature in mind when we select this okay so we know that our ambient temperature is 60 degrees at 75. I'm going to say insulation here. Tells me that we have a correction factor of 0.58. And what that means is, based on that 60 degree ambient temperature for that 75 degree insulation, we have a reduced ampacity of 58%. We can handle essentially 58% of what that conductor can normally handle. So, Looking at that, we're going to take a look at two methods to determine what size conductor we actually need in this installation. Because if we take a look, let's say we're going to call this method one. And this is kind of a long-winded method of doing it. I'm going to show you a quicker way that works just as well and is much faster. So method one, let's take a look at that original number six. That number six, which was good for 65 amps, right can no longer handle that 65 amps we know that it's reduced by 58 percent of its original so we're going to go times 0.58 that tells me that that number six can now only handle 37.7 amps in that situation well that's too small right so let's go up to the next available size let's go with the number four maybe number number four will work number four has an ampacity of 85 amps well 85 amps times 0.58 gives me 49.3 amps so again that's too small we need to handle this 55 amp load in this 60 degree condition so maybe we'll try next one a number three which has an ampacity of 100 amps 
times 0.58 equals 58 amps. Well, that works. We know that that can now safely handle that 55 amp load in this situation. But how long did that take us to go through method one? All right, there's a much quicker and simpler way. Let's take a look at method two. When we interpret the code word for word, method one is kind of how we interpret it, but this is kind of a backwards engineered version of how to select a conductor, but it works every time. So we're going to take our load, 55 amps, and we're going to divide it by that correction factor that we obtained from table 5a, which was our 0.58, which automatically gives us an artificially inflated value of 94.8 amps. This tells me right away, based on that 60 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, that this is the minimum ampacity of the conductor that I should be selecting. So when we go to table 2 in our 75 degree column, we end up choosing a number 3 aug, which we know has an ampacity of 100 amps under normal circumstances, right? Which works, because that's what we ended up with right here. We ended up with a number 3 in both situations. Method 2 just saved us a whole lot of time as far as determining what that conductor should be. Okay, one thing to keep in mind though, when I am selecting my conductor, if I'm going to go select my overcurrent device, I need to keep in mind that I'm not selecting my overcurrent device based on the opacity of the conductor now. Because remember, this number 3, even though it's good for 100 amps normally, in this situation, it has a reduced opacity to 58% of its original value. So to select an overcurrent from 14-104, we need to take our 100 amps times... 0.58, we're going to go back down, equals 58 amps. This is now the number that we would select the overcurrent device based off of. So in this case, if I was to go table 13 and buy my overcurrent device, there is no 58 amp available, but it tells me in 14104 sub row 1 that I'm available, or sorry, I'm allowed to go up to the next available size. So we end up with a 60 amp overcurrent in this situation. We don't need a higher overcurrent device because that ambient temperature is not affecting the overcurrent device itself. There is a rule that tells us right off the bat, 26-600 uh, sub rule 1 states that that panel can't be located in a room with a high ambient anyways, so that's not an issue. If you have comments or questions, please fire them into the comments section below. I'll try and answer them as quick as I can. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.